Mr. Palmer, how you doing? Hey, I'm good, my brother. How's everything? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Uh, so, you know, I wanted to start right off by asking, who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> this system, man. <laughs> this system called called family court. You know what I'm saying? These baby, mom, the baby mama terrorists. You know that that's what that's what they asked me. That's who hurt me. So so, uh, what exactly is a baby mama terrorist? A baby mama terrorist is one who uh, terrorizes fathers from being in their child's lives. And then a lot of the actions that they do, you know, run to the court for bail relationships, uh, mentally abusing the kid, alienating the kid, you know, causing havoc. You know, so many things, you know, uh, putting kids in grown up business. Anything that's ratchet, low life, devilish, is a baby mama terrorist. So is every baby mama then a terrorist? No, every baby mama is not a terrorist. Uh, a baby mama terrorist, I will say, come in all forms. I mean, it's not just a, a black a black thing. A baby mama terrorist come in all forms. Uh, a mother and a, and a baby mama terrorist are two different individuals because a, a mother is not going to do no, well, do this have to be clean before I go? Oh, no, you you say what you okay. what you want to say, man. Okay, because a mother's not going to do no type of shit like that. They're right. not. That's totally different. Um, so, you know, I heard you talking about uh, Karen and how Karen is is uh, the worst. Uh, is the worst. Mm -hmm. Now, why, why, why do you say that? Okay, um, when I first started the Fuck Child Support, I had the mindset that, hey, you just hurting the black man and and stuff like that, you know. But then when I built the platform, Fuck Child's Put on Facebook, I had a lot of white men come on my platform telling me, like, nah, brother, it's, 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 it's white men get it the worst, and it ain't just y'all, it's, it's us too. So I started doing more research. And then I realized the history of Child's Put. Child's Put was created to uh, help the married white woman back in the day. It wasn't it wasn't for unmarried women, and, and it was from... Um, White men who went overseas, I guess, fighting the war, military men, and wasn't coming back. So that's how alimony and child support was created. And back then, you know, women weren't allowed to vote, and and they weren't allowed to work and stuff like that. So they was abandoned. So back then, child support was legit. So when people got the the the, uh, the black man as the face of being dead beaten you know, on child support and all that shit, when the actuality it was started for the white man, and it was legit. You ran with your responsibility. She ain't allowed to work, so of course, child support. I get it, but let's go down the line. And before we get go down the line, in the '60s, or at least when that was going on with them, our family structure was. I I, I got to get it right, but it was between 85 to 98 percent family structure with the black family. We didn't have no problems until the '60s. You know, yes, yeah, left a few, but it wasn't like that. It wasn't not until the '60s. When the Democrats, Lyndon B. Johnson, came out that that welfare and keep the man out the house and do a shit, you know. But before, like I said, child support back then was for married white women. If you was unwedded and had a kid, you ain't getting no child support. And it was like I said, it was for them. So go down the line. I guess, in my opinion, that government daddy realized, hey man, it's a lucrative business. There's so many women are having kids out of wedlock. So now is at the point that anybody can go up to the courtroom, whether it's out of wedlock, whether he's in the pitch, whether he's uh, take care of his kid, if he's not take care of his kid. It's all about government daddy getting that check. So anybody can get put on child support, whether he's a good father, bad father, it doesn't matter. It's gender bias. $51 billion uh, business. So that's who hurt Yeah, it, yeah one. <laughs> that's what they want to use. Hey, 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 is is your mama black? Oh yeah, my mama black. <laughs> my daddy black. I was raised by both parents. Never been in jail. <laughs> my kids was playing. I wasn't married, but I was in an eleven year relationship. So yeah, yeah, my mama black. I love when they say that, man. When they and they say I got mom, <laughs> my daddy issues, and I'm like, I was raised by both parents. Yeah. <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't yeah, me, the situation. Yeah, me too. Uh, me too. I was uh, raised by both parents. My yeah. parents are still married. Yeah. My parents passed away, unfortunately. Yeah, they was married for like uh, 
42 years, and then my dad passed in 2008, and then my mom died eight years later in 2016. Other than that, yeah, they, I still have my parents. Yeah, yeah I'm the youngest. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, too often is the case that because of a lot of what's going on in the court system, um, kids don't have those relationships with their dads. Right. And I think one thing that is a bit different about the so, uh, the so-called mission of the manosphere uh, or what O'Shea uh, Duke Jackson terms the white manosphere and the black manosphere is that the black manosphere seems to be more focused on uh, these sort of uh, imparting skills and information to men that didn't have a relationship with their dad. Right. And, um, and in that way, I think serving a vital, you know, service, something is very important, you know, and it could be anything from, you know, how to talk to a female, um, how to get your money right, how to level up, you know, how to in, improve the options uh, to uh, talking frankly about, you know, things to look out for. Stuff right. like, you know, <laughs> baby mama terrorist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Baby mama yeah. terrorist. The thing is, the thing is, um, what I'm trying to teach men is this is what could happen to you if you get, if you, uh, one, you know, you get married and you ain't got your paperwork in order. Cause I tell anybody get married, you get to a prenup and you don't just have, um, get a girl pregnant because you think she's the right type of person. You got to investigate this person. So my goal now, because we definitely have to learn the laws, especially where we live when it comes to child support. We all, we all, I said, we got to have an exit plan. The thing is we have to change the laws. My mind meaning we have to, we have to take accountability. We have to love ourselves. We have to fix ourselves. We have to save ourselves. And we got to do for self mentally, physically, and spiritually. We got to get ourselves in order in order mm -hmm. for us to, um, love others or teach others, we got to learn. I mean, we got to love ourselves. We got to teach ourselves and we got to grow and build. So where everybody's saying, okay, the fund child support, uh, reform child support, if I'm telling they do that bullshit, man, it'll be a whole nother generation. We won't be here, man. That's if they do it. Cause that's a $51 billion dollar, uh, business. They not finna cut it down for you. Even if it is about the best interest of the kid, cause it's not about the best interest of the kid. So we have to get ourselves in order so we can be able to make change for our future. Cause they change the laws in mind. They're not gonna get this type of situation because they're not just gonna get it with any woman just because she look good or got a butt, uh, got money, got education. Yep. They're gonna definitely check them thorough. Not just check them. How her mama? How's the mama? Is she a baby mama tear? Do she got ten kids and, and and twenty different niggas? Do is the father around? Is he a, is he the leader of the household? He's a, a separate force. There's a lot of factors. Do she believe in child support? Do do she believe in uh uh submissive? Do she know her role? All that shit comes to play. It's like when it comes now in this day and age, you want to have sex with me, you got to earn it. You got to earn it. Mm. It's a privilege. That's how we got to be. Exactly. That's how it got to be. And and we got to stop being simple for us. We got to be thinkers and not reactors. A lot of these people, these baby mama tests be the main ones talking about black man ain't shit. They don't lead us. They don't protect us. And I, and I tell you, I said over and over and over. I said, but who been having primary custody of our boys for the last 30, 40 years? Mm. You. You. Even with the white women. Max. You. You can't make this up. And I talk about I talk about on a statistic graph. I show the shit. And yet they still say, no, a lot of y'all y'all just want to have kids all over the place and all that. But I don't entertain them. I only focus on the minority. We are, we as men are the minority. We are getting, we in the trenches against the government daddy. Baby mama terrorists and he's simple for us. That's why we gotta separate ourselves from him. From it. that shit is real. Shit up, man. Appreciate you. That's <laughs> <style>, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I had to, I had to do it, man. Yeah. You know one one thing that I was reminded about, uh, you know, watching your content is, <clears throat> you know, that there that the uh, what is it the judges pension is some is a uh, piece of it. yeah so they're getting a piece of of child support yes. can, you, can you talk a little bit about that 
Okay. Thank you so much for watching my video so far. If you'd like to support, there are several ways to do so below. Also, likes are free. Please comment, share, and subscribe. Now back to the video. Yes. Can, you, can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. Um, it's something about the judges that work four days out the week versus the five days. They get, uh, uh, I was told about that, but I do know each child support, they get a piece going into their pension. It's like a bonus, like a salesman or some type of shit. That would say the sister, they all get paid. It's circled around them. And <laughs> their job is to make the system money. It is. No. And it's their job to keep their man on child support, it's their job to give the kid to the mom. The only way you would imagine because of their kids is because they spend a lot of bread and because physical abuse. Because if you try to use verbal abuse or alienation, they don't care about none of that shit. Them just don't, it would not go against the code. They, they side with them. Not because they give a fuck about the, these baby mamas here. It's because they the most benefit for them. She on welfare, mm. or, 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 or she on welfare, he working a six-figure job. Why get him custody when we can give her custody, let her do what she do, and we'll get $2,000 a month off him. Even though we already know he's going to be be a next pookie or Ray Ray or whoever, school shooter. But, hey, <laughs> we'll make money. I'm serious, look. And when he go to jail, we'll make money off him in jail because he'll be a slave of ours. So that's what I'm saying, money all the way around. You can't make this shit up. Amazing. Yeah, but I'm that dumbass nigga off College Grove, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick at night came on your show, and you you you. Uh, I know you know I was in the chat uh, for that yeah, show. Yeah, I watched yeah, that. Yeah. I watched that whole show, and then actually we ended up talking after that show was over, and yeah. you did really really great numbers on yeah, that show. Over twelve thousand. The thing about it is, uh, whether it was her or anybody else. Who hurt you? That's what she, you know, who hurt you? Right. She led with that stuff, man. Uh, and that's fine. <laughs> but but I'm it, it, it's, it's funny because another woman, another woman, maybe that was last night, another woman yeah, another. led right out with that same talking point. It's like it's the only thing that they can say. <laughs> they do it because that's they 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 so called way of shaming you to be quiet. That's the problem. A lot of us as men have been quiet because even the the most alpha is the most alpha dude. Talk about feminists getting married, dating fat women, and all that stuff. They want to talk about their child support. They might say, "Well, you're going to quit, you fuck," but they won't get into that like the way I'm doing. That's that's what put me in my own way versus everybody else. You know, a lot of uh, fathers' rights movement. They out there talk to these leg legislators and everything, and I respect that. You know, because the more you fight, hopefully, in due time it change. But they've been fighting for a lot of years before I even knew about the child support. But the thing is. What do we do while we're doing this? We have to get ourselves in order. People are killing themselves. People are killing their baby mama terrorists. People are going to jail because they run off their emotions. So we got to help each other, build one another, and grow because a lot of men actually believe that it's just them going through the situation because when the white talk about it. Yeah. So that's why I do what I do. So it's about spreading awareness, uh, informing men, and even women because I got women on my platform. Who, who know it's not right for. I got a few people that was thinking the same thing, they don't want to be fathers, but then as down the line start watching me more, they realized that, damn, I didn't know it was this bad. Somebody said it today. Damn, I didn't know baby mom tears was that bad. I thought this. So that's what I'm saying. As long as I get that one or two people, it's going to grow slowly, but surely. I'm not worried about the majority. The majority is going to side with government daddy and, and, and these baby mama terrorists and welfare and everything else. But I tell you this, a baby mama terrorist that's on welfare is not the worst baby mama terrorist. Actually, the worst baby mama terrorist is an educated, six-figured, license degrees baby mama terrorist. I'm going to tell you why. They got a shield to hide behind. Press that button for me, brother. Press that button for me. <laughs> <laughs> they got a shield to hide behind, fam. They can use their shield. Why, why would I eliminate him? I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm a nurse. And I ain't got no record, and, and I, I work. I don't get on welfare, and they'll look at that shit, and they'll spend all their money to set you up for failure with they stupid ass. They don't care. Yeah, you know, the one, one thing that you said about uh, there's this sort of alienation that happens um, 
uh, with men because, you know, we, we, we don't realize that other men have gone through similar things, Exactly. you know, now, you know, um, I, I've never, uh, I've never had to deal with child support or the system, That's but good. I know a lot of brothers, a lot of my, uh, best friends, you know, good friends, uh, deal with it. And, you know, just to know that you're not alone in whatever, uh, whatever thing that you're, that you're dealing with. I think, again, that's one of these major services that I think the Black Manosphere is serving. Um, and, yeah, the space is not a monolithic space. And so you have all types of, of folks um, with different pedigrees and producing different kind of content. But one thing that is is the same is that there's always an open ear for, for men that are going through it. And, uh, you know, and I think that's one service that, though uh, you have a particular approach that's you know you're you're assertive you're uh uh there's a like a visceral response i think sometimes people can have from your content um uh but you're always listening you know and that's one thing that i notice is whenever a guy gets on there and actually you even <laughs> you're even willing to listen to women that don't have any idea what oh, yeah. they're talking about oh yeah i do you know they have the right yeah. to what they believe in. And plus, sometimes it's best to let them talk because the truth will really come out. Just like when Nikki Knight was on there, she was talking and talking to she brought up her situation. That right there really sealed the deal. You know, you know, she she basically a baby mama terrorist that uh alienated, as far as I can say, she alienated that man and that man served her papers. Ain't no man for to serve no woman no papers to spend money and waste money to lose money. That's one. Now somebody would, now don't get me wrong, you got cats that got that bread that do it just to hurt you, but that's very rare. But the ones that's out there working an average job and all that, they fight because they want to be around their daughter, their son. But unfortunately, when you fight for equal parent time or, or soul cussing, primary cussing, they say you don't want to pay child support, which if you want equal, if you want equal parenting, you still can pay child support. But when these baby mama tears ask for sole custody, probably they custody, what are they looking for? They want to talk about that. They look for more money. The less, the more money they'll get is is the more, the more, the less time the man get, the more money they make. But if I fight for equal parents and I, want, I don't want to pay child support, you fight for sole custody, you you just want the best interest of the child. Get the fuck out of here. You can't make this yeah, shit up. Yeah. Gender bias like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, the yeah the welfare of the child argument is is total hogwash. Right. Uh, we know that this the uh, when if it has to be a single parent, that kids tend to fare be better when the father is the single parent. Right. Um. It's and of course this is the case especially with boys, but right. it would be the same it would be the same case with girls also because. Uh, what tends to happen with kids that are raised by single mothers um, uh, is that the, uh, the 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 girls they sort of they don't learn how to relate to a man, and then they they start start chasing the wrong kind of men. Uh, that's a that's a pretty common tendency. It doesn't always happen that way, but that's pretty common. It happens most and of then, the time. It happens most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. And then what happens to the boys is they become feminized and emotional. Simple forces. And uh yeah, and the, yeah, talk 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 a little bit about this term simp enforcers. What what it is that you mean exactly? Uh a simp enforcer is basically somebody who's um it's it's multiple meanings with that when I create they, they it's like they they job, they work for the DEA, they work for the for, for the for, uh the unit to to go out there and petty cake a baby mama tears, not hold them no accountability, give them a crown on their head, still call them queen, uh, give a, uh still call them God as Mother Earth, still saying you're a good mother, regardless of what you do. Yeah, it's okay, you got five kids by ten different niggas, and they <laughs> because of, right, because all they want to do is get all they want to do is get some ass. And and, and and if it's not about getting some ass, then maybe they, they act like they just feminine because they've been around their baby mama terrorist mother. A lot of a lot of these simple forces come from 
baby mama tears and chose single mother river. Now, his, I will say this. You could be a single mother and not be a baby mama tears. But the ones I talk about, the baby mama tears who chose single mother rhythm. And what I mean by choose single mother rhythm, because people tend to say, don't no woman choose single mother rhythm. It's a lie. You elevate the father out of the picture, you chose single mother rhythm. You have a kid with a man who told you, I don't want no kids. And you have it anyway, you chose single mother rhythm. You have sex and get pregnant by a dude who got 10 kids already, and he, he's known for not doing shit. You chose single mother rhythm. You was not a victim. You was a volunteer. You volunteered that. Now, if you was a person that, okay, y'all planned the kid, y'all had the kid, and y'all broke up, and I hear a few guys be like, well, since you ain't going to be back with me, I'm going to take care of the kid. No, nah, she didn't choose single mother, really. But these baby mama tears who causing all this habit, manipulating the kid, and put, uh, putting people on child support because you ain't with them no more, and teach them a lesson, and all that shit. Those, those are the big moments to choose single motherism. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> choosing single motherism. Yeah, you know, so so women have at their disposal these days dozens and dozens of birth control options. 20 remedies, 20 different remedies. Yeah, yeah. and so, uh, and when when something fails... Uh, there's a plan B. Yeah. Um, and if that fails, I, I don't advocate um, abortion. I'm pro-life, mm. which is interesting because most of the folks in the in the manosphere space are pro-life. That seems that's that seems like a really strange thing. You would think, you know, that, yeah. you would think. Say, say it again. I said you would think that because the way we say it, a lot of a lot of people say don't have kids and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I'm. Me, uh, I used to, I don't, it's like this. This is my opinion. I am pro-life, but what they need to do that they'll never do, if you say my body, my choice, then it shouldn't be his responsibility. It should be my body, my choice. You take the responsibility. And with the man, if he already told you he didn't want that kid, my money, my choice, I don't want to pay for that. Uh -huh. Yeah. See? <laughs> But like I say, then again, let me the simp enforcement unit. It, I'm the the the, the, the simp enforcement unit actually is uh, government daddy, the man who created these laws. Them are the biggest simps in the world. They created these laws. Like I tell you all the time, this is a man's world, but the the women run the system, and it's designed, and it was designed by these weak simps. Government daddy, the biggest nice. simps. They they use them. To reap the benefits of money game. They don't give a fuck about that kid. They don't give a fuck about even her. Again, like I say, it's all about that money. And that, when it comes to that child support, that's the, the richest court ever. $51 billion a year? And you think they finna uh, make it mandatory for parenting and give him his rights for, for, for you? No. Yeah, you know, the w one way you know that the this stuff is is totally bogus is that equal parenting is not the default. You know, not that should be the default. It should be the default. And for, I mean, why would it not be the default? I'm, and I know they're using these old reasonings um, uh, for why they still are holding on to that. But with the research, with the data that is out, what, with what we know, there is no reason why that shouldn't be uh you know, the default position, you know, equal, equal parenting. And it was interesting because uh, with uh, Nick at night, uh, she was trying to, uh, you know, she was trying to get you to say, or get someone to admit that <laughs> yeah. men, men ask for, for equal parenting. So, you know, so that they don't have to play, pay child support oh, or I they don't. can pay less child support or something. I don't and it's like, I don't, that is I don't, I don't, really, I don't that, but I want to see, that's the thing. I want, because at one point women went on my show, but I want women who who, who believe that rhetoric to come on here because a lot of people say, no, nah, women don't believe that. They don't believe that. I said, yeah, not women, but Bay Mama Tears do. So I want y'all to see for yourself. Don't <laughs> my word for it. She tell you up front, this is what her stance is. So how many of these Bay Mama Tears you think are out here? So you can't sit there and tell me I'm lying. I, I, that's why I let her say, say her piece. I'm not going to cut off. I'm not going to call her black whores and all that shit. You got to write say what you want to say. And 
people gonna learn from because people was like, man, she was over talking everybody. I said, yeah, I know. And I want her to because you get to see how they act when the truth hurts. That's why. I didn't, I wasn't gonna block her. I want her to cut off. None of that shit. I want her to act the way she's gonna act. And mind you, she got over 244,000 subscribers on her YouTube. She's been around for a year. I was watching her off and on when um when I didn't have a YouTube page. Yeah, you know, um it wasn't even planned. Uh, it wasn't even planned. I didn't even know she came on my show. This one plan, it wasn't planned. I was shocked to see her and I was like, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. No, I I I I noticed that in uh, I thought that was a uh, quite fortuitous event um, because, you you know, obviously uh, it helped to bring some more numbers to the platform. Some folks that, you know, probably would not normally come and, and check you out. But then it also, I think, exposed a lot of the arguments that that's, she was using. I think why. it was very obvious that she that's, didn't know what she was talking about. That's why. I was so glad she came on there and came on, on came on the fly. I didn't think she was gonna come. But at first, when I said come on, I said, you ain't gonna come on here. Like 10 minutes later, she came on. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's talk. And I'm like, I'm gonna let you know that you don't know what you're talking about. Since I'm hurt, I, was like, I told her, you hurt me. <laughs> you hurt me. <laughs> you hurt me. Yeah, I mean, I see, I get all that, you know, deadbeat, rumble child's photo. I sleep on the couch over there and shit. I ain't got nothing and living off bitch. Hey man, whatever you say, but you cannot call me a liar. I own up to being all them mm. things, but you will not be able to call me a liar. But let's talk about you, baby mama chairs. Let's let's talk about this over here with the stats and and these videos that I post every day on my Instagram and and Facebook. Let's talk about the uh, economic aspects of uh, child support. Let's talk about the lead attorney that came on there and told you, and he's an attorney that you waste your money trying to fight if this. This baby mama Terry don't have no uh, physical type of abuse going on. You know what I'm saying? And and other people have been on the platform telling their story. Everybody got the same, almost similar situation. People from all over the nation about a baby mama Terry they dealt with. Same, similar. Not not the exact same, but similar. You and that's yeah. what I'm saying. You tell, but you yet you tell me that this shit ain't. It, it's on. It's on us. We all having kids, a bunch of kids, all of them. Like and I'm showing the I'm showing the graph. Right, I, I, I know, I, I know. And, and they still talking that shit. I let it sit there. Remember, I let it sit there. You was there. Yeah. That was just that's that thing. I let it sit there, and they still saying the shit. And it's interesting because uh, that that graph is actually rather generous. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, because the the latest numbers, as I understand them, is actually fifty one percent. Yes, it is. Of black men are it. single and childless. Yeah, I just couldn't right. find it. So I'm like, I'm going to put something that's accurate because nobody said it ain't, yep. it's altered and all that. So I went back to 2012. And like right. I said, it is about 51%. And the next 10 years, probably be 60%. Because a lot of men is not going to go into that dilemma, getting married, get divorced, child support, half the income gone, they struggling, living in the hut, working at Walmart. That's what I'm saying, man. It, and having kids going and, and being alienated. Men, men are either not having kids or getting second or going overseas. And I told him you got to be careful going overseas because some countries overseas got child support. It ain't just here. It's a worldwide pandemic. Yeah. You can't make this shit up, man. Yeah, very a apropos, the use of a worldwide pandemic there. Um, so um, can you talk to us a little bit about your upbringing? Well, um, I'm the youngest. Yeah. I was raised on the South Side of Chicago. I ain't never cottage girl. That's why you mean some dumb nigga off cottage girl, because you know they think, you know, think I'm stupid. You know, that's that's what they try to say. You know, I come with logic and and research and everything else. Um had both parents, learned a lot. And I had older parents too, because my uh they they it's like I guess they had a one more time. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. What? Because I'm young. I'm the youngest. I'm, I'm young. Um, and my dad always taught me to um, stay away from bullshit. And I never went to jail. He taught me about um, the reality of life. He always spoke his truth, whether you liked it or not. He spoke his truth. That's where I get it from. <clears throat> my mama, she taught me how to um, build my credit. I was cutting the grass when I was six years old. 
I was there. You go. I um, uh, I was paying bills at a young age by choice, not by force. Like a big mom tell to make you pay rent, and you working making a hundred dollars, she'll take ninety dollars a week from you. My mom wasn't a big mom of terrorist. She she uh church going. My dad, he read the Bible, he he said uh Christianity, but well, Baptist was the fakest, fakest church ever, because they're fake preachers. And what he used to do, he'll talk to her preacher, who she was <laughs> who was a preacher, and he'll go off the Bible about what it says and make them be quiet because it'll make them look stupid because they said one thing, but that ain't what it mean, because he's trying to tickle these <laughs> big mama tears at the church's chin, Let's get that plate. And that's why I said about these simple forces, these fake pro-black simple forces, them the biggest simple forces in the black community. They will patty cake a big mama terrorist regardless of what they do, even though they on child support themselves and alienated and being mistreated by their queen goddess. And we we'll tell them that you ain't did nothing wrong, it's our fault. Mm. You know, um, and I post that some days ago. You can't make this shit up. Um, and it's sad that these simple forces will call out somebody else being on child support when they're still on child support. They have been to jail. They alienated. You know what I'm saying? So my dad always taught me, don't never go along to get along. So mm. right is right, wrong is wrong. And that's how I was raised. And he always taught me to be a thinker, not a reactor. He taught me... Uh, about history, black kids. But we have older parents. There was a benefit and a curse. The curse was one by him being much older than me. You know, he more strict. You know, <laughs> more strict about you know being out there in the street shit. Um, the other downside is he's older, so he can't play too long outside playing basketball and stuff like that. But the good side, I had a bunch of uncles, cousins, a huge family, and uh, I had a lot of men in my life. I had aunties too, but I had a lot of men in my life. And my mom, I mean, my mom traveled going back and forth to Mississippi. I was going to the country part of Shibuta, Mississippi with cows and the chickens and the pigs and, and stuff like that. So I learned about the country. I was going to every year, every year. It was like I was practically raised out there. So I learned about going out to the country part versus the city, traveling, um, you know, um, do do good in school. I wasn't honest to nothing like that. But Went to school, graduated on time, went to high school, um, graduated, ended up going to Chicago State the first year, they ended up going to Columbia College for uh, business engine, for music business and sound engineer. I did three years there, but I didn't finish. Then I turned around, I got a two-year degree from uh, Northwestern Business College for uh, business administration. And I realized down the line that shit wasn't shit um, because just a paper on the wall, because it seemed like when black people get an associate, now they say you got to get a bachelor. And then when you get the bachelor, now they say, oh, now you got to get a master, because it's like they want to keep you down. You know, um, I'll tell you what my dad did tell me, and he kept real with me, he said, you got to stay away from niggas. And um, the niggas I be talking about is a lot of these simple forces who want to set you up for failure. And mm -hmm. they want to hold you down. They want to... Um, they mad at you because you try to really do something and they want to do it the easy way, you know? So I was born, I was born and raised in the neighbor in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Grow a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of them murdered, a lot of them in jail, a lot of them made it out of jail, a lot of them didn't, you know? Um, my life wasn't, wasn't perfect, but I love, I love my upbringing. I love my upbringing. Yeah. You know, you were, you were talking about the, uh, you were talking about the Bible and, you know, yeah. church and stuff, <laughs> black church and stuff, you know, yeah. you know, it's interesting. One sentiment that seems to be, uh, ubiquitous in the, in the, in the manosphere, in the black manosphere is this idea that the, that the, the church is blue pill, but the Bible is red pill, you know? And <clears throat> it's interesting because much of the values uh, that I hear constantly, you know, repeated, espoused are biblical values. I mean, it's, you know, stuff like traditional family, the role of the man, um, you know, um, uh, you know, having a masculine frame, you know, I always, I always refer to Adam as an Adam and Eve. Adam was the first simp. He is the first simp. 
I'll tell you, yeah, I, just... I said a while back, he is. Because you let Eve, and you know, I'll be honest with you, uh, if you go back in the Bible, he had, a, he had somebody before Eve. He had somebody, I, 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 I forgot what was her name, but it, he had somebody before Eve. But you let this, this baby mama terrorist, Eve, ah. suck, suck you to eat that apple because she over there having sex with the devil, the snake or whoever. And now because of that, you set all your children up for failure, which is us that we we have to die. That that's the biggest simple of all sins. <laughs> yeah, you know, simple. It, and God told it, you something. God God told him. Uh, God didn't ask Eve why you disobey. He asked him. Right. That's facts. So that's like facts. I say, he was to blame because you're supposed to be that lead. You're supposed to have been that man. You knew my rule. And she goes yep. to follow, but unfortunately, that's that's these seven forces. No accountability. He went alone and got alone, and look what happened now. You know, I often I often think about this uh, it's sort of a thought experiment. It's just okay. What if Adam had sort of grown a backbone? He what if he grew a backbone in that moment <laughs> and took responsibility? Said, yeah, you know what that's my bad. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I'm taking, I'm taking accountability for this. What that, what would have happened? You know, it, yeah. it's, you know, with the way that I read the Bible, it seems that God has uh, specific standards. He has things that he's not playing around with, but it also seems that if you learn if you learn from the lesson, then things can be a lot easier for you, <laughs> you know? And so it just, it make it, it, so often I think about what if Adam would have been red pill? <laughs> Probably living in paradise. That's right. <laughs> Probably living in paradise. We wouldn't be red born. pill Adam. <laughs> yeah, red pill Adam. But now he, you know, he, Unfortunately, he was a uh, purple pill, blue pill. He's one of them. <laughs> He's Seven. one of those, right? <laughs> Sad, man. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, we recently had a presidential election, and. I, I can't remember a time where it seemed like the black community was more divided oh, yeah. on on who to put in the White House. The black the black women did that. The black feminist women um, helped get uh, Joe Biden and um, Kamala Harris out. I mean, in office. And yeah, it, it, ma ma Mamala, ma Mamala. <laughs> that's I, I, what her same. that's what her white daughters call her, Mamala. Yeah. I, they should have kept Trump in office, and now they starting to see the light. Though they they seeing the light, but it's too late. And and that's that the, the Black Lives Matter motherfuckers too, because I've been telling people from day one, Black Lives Matter is not for us. They using uh, black men getting killed by the police as a propaganda to get their money. That's they 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 generate ninety million. But the sad part is the the, the victims of the family are not coming out years later when they get ninety million dollars. Why you bring this shit out when this shit first happened? But it, you didn't have to investigate because it was on a uh, website. They they for the alphabet community, black alphabets. They not for straight black men. They not for the family structure. They said this. People said I was a, I was just mad and set out. I hate my I hate my I hate I hate, uh, I hate myself. No, I don't. I hate I hate this bullshit that y'all keep going along going on to get along. And look at them now. Yeah, you know the the. Uh, um... You know, Minister Jap frequently says that the last minority is the straight, free-thinking black man. Right. And uh, I concur. Uh, it seems that, I mean, you know, one thing on a recent show, he said, you know, you know, show me the line that black men can stand in where they can get their needs met. <laughs> you know, there right. is no line. It's Dang it's it's, it's called it's called homelessness. Exactly. <laughs> that's 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 or jail. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, whereas it seems that every other group has some sort of, uh, what is it, Gl uh, glass glass floor. You know, they can't go beyond <laughs> with that glass floor. It's, that, that doesn't mm -hmm. apply yeah. to us at all. Now, Jeff, good people from Chicago, too. Yeah, I met him a couple of times. He good people. Uh, he didn't want to recommend me come on, on the YouTube platform because I was on Facebook and Instagram. And him and O'Shea. And uh, I've been on here ever since. So I've been over here over, uh, over a year now. And now I'm, I'm at close to 4,000. I'm at 3,700. Still growing. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing about your channel that's interesting is most folks with your subscriber count are not getting the kind of live views that you're getting. You're getting unusual live views. So it's like a high percentage of the folks that are subscribers are active subscribers. Yeah. And it's interesting. There's this, there's this principle where, um, so there's a difference between a fan and a follower, you know, a follower is someone that clicked the subscribe button and every once in a while they'll go watch your thing. A fan is someone that's basically watching everything and is supporting financially. They're doing all kinds of stuff. You only really need 1,000 fans. Right. If you have that, no matter how many subscribers you have, you're going to be okay. And um, I think often, uh, you know, the tendency is to sort of focus on the subscriber number but th that's not the number that matters it's the real fan number yeah i'm not you know, focusing on that. i'm not focusing on it at all because the thing is i already know it's going to be a slow process because everybody uh, uh, is not going to want to touch that because they're scared to touch that or they don't want to affiliate themselves with that and it comes with the territory just like my facebook page it went all the way, it's up to 134,000 followers and likes and now my Instagram is 12, I think it's 12,000 or, or 11,200, one or the other. But it, it, it's steady jumping and growing because a lot of people are seeing the lightning and getting tired of it. And yeah. this shit is real, man. People people want to take it, it ain't real, it's a joke, but I'm just putting it out there and people start to realize and see for themselves that, hey, I don't want to be in I got, like, I got men that don't even have kids that's only supporting my child because they seen their father go through it. And yeah. People tell me this is the reason why I'm not having kids. I'm not rushing none because of you. And I appreciate it. That's all I just want. I just want people to change the laws in their mind. Even one, even a woman can change the laws in their mind. I even tell women who taught me the background, I say the father really don't want to be a father. It was planned. He mad because I won't get back with him. I said, keep your veins cold. Wash your hands and move on. Just don't be dissing the dad and talking bad about him and manipulating the kid. The kid see for herself or herself in due time. And you live your life because while you focus on him getting mad about getting a hundred dollars of blood in the mouth, the, the kid is hurt because you're going to take it on that same kid, and the kid won't be able to have a natural mother that you should be. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, so talk talk to us a little bit because I hear you say that frequently. Keep your veins cold. Oh, what hey. what exactly do you mean? Don't give a fuck. What I mean is. Mm. You can't give a fuck because keeping your veins cold basically means keep that shell. You know what I'm saying? Because you, when you fight for, it ain't even just child support. When you fight for what you believe in, you fight for what's right, and the majority is against you, you're going to be shamed. You're going to get lied on. You're going to get clowned. You're going to get fronted and all that shit. So you cannot stop the fight because somebody called you a deadbeat, even though you know it's not true, but you know people are so manipulated nowadays. Even the grown up, not just kidding, even the grown up. You keep hearing over and over and over, you tend to believe the shit true. But see, what I always say, let me make sure I have it right here. You can't. Not that one. Not that one. I'm sorry. I want you to hear. You know one of my uh, favorite lines when they try to disrespect and talk shit about me. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. And I really don't. Uh -huh. I really don't. And that, and that, that's what I mean by keeping your veins cold. You fighting in court trying to be a father, and you see these judges trying to shame you and lie on you and try to scare you. You keep your veins on ice so you don't fold and cry and hurt and go in a hole and, and, and shut the blinds down and never come outside and you don't want to go to work. You don't want to live your life. You keep your veins cold and live your life to the fullest, even to the point where you have to wash your hands and walk, and walk away. 
because you don't want to lose your foundation. You don't want to lose your livelihood. You don't want to lose the people that support you. You don't want to do that because when you do that, she still wins. The kids still lose. So why die young for? Why die young over some shit you can't control? So you have to keep your veins cold, cold in something you believe in. So um, now thinking back at the, some of how you were talking about uh, some of the things your dad taught you. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like now it wasn't called red pill back then, but no. it seemed like he was pretty red pill. Basically, yeah, because um, yeah. that's what I would tell people. I'm like, I was, if you, this is the definition of a red pill. I was red pill a long time ago. You know, I only heard about red pill within the last couple of years. You know, um, but if you have a, 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 a alpha male father or a father who's a lead, you're gonna have you're gonna learn the red pill. And what he taught me to do for self. He always said, God bless child has it on. My mama, my mama even told me, don't depend on no woman. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be, because she won't respect you. Now, Elijah Muhammad say that, Greg Khan say that, but my mama told me that. She told me that at grown. So I mean, and and, and and like I say, um, I wasn't ever the type to to kiss a bitch ass. I'm not finna um dumb down for you. If I say, if I say, I stand on what I say, and I mean what I say, and I will take an L for it. And that's why we try to tell Cass, if you're not willing to go all the way with it, then don't do it. Because it makes you look bad when you backtrack, like the Nick Cannon situation. He said what he said about the about them. I ain't gonna say it because I, you know, you know, about them on his platform. And then when they came at him, they took away his uh that show. He started puffing up, kissing and sorry, and doing tours with him and everything else. And I'm like, you should have just shut your mouth, let the dude that was on your platform say what he had to say, because he didn't care. But you put your two cents in, and look what happened. Now you kissing that. It made him look real bad. And and that's what I say. You don't believe in it. And if people are trying to say, well, that's his money. If that was his money, he should have thought about that before he says said something. He should have just not said nothing. You just interview him. Sometimes if you know you ain't willing to go that far to lose your what you got. And just shut your mouth. Stay in your lane. Mm, that's facts. Stay in your fucking lane. I don't have nothing to lose, bro. I don't have nothing to lose. Well, you know, uh uh this this whole you know the terminology the red pill terminology coming from the matrix movie and everything yeah um it is i don't know it seemed like initially when it came to be that that terminology was being used i think it it seemed very appropriate i think it's kind of gotten a little it's almost sort of cringy at this point the use the use of some of these terms um uh because it the the terms are just really just to describe just being a natural man right (laughs) you know it just i agree with you man i mean from the logic i'm a red pill you know what i'm saying but i mean that's just what i've been doing that's that's how i was raised my uncle's like the same way man i i mean but i mean it's cool because People actually trying to build a brotherhood, but I will tell you this: what I realized being in, in the black manosphere, you got a lot of uh, sympathy for even the black manosphere. A lot of them ain't living to what they say. I'm just gonna keep it real with you. And that's true. I had to. I'm cool with everybody. Where like I'm gonna speak, and I ain't gonna be disrespectful, nothing like that in front of you all. But at the same time, I can only go for, so far with you. I can't put myself in that situation because I'm not on here to try to be with other uh, content creators, other people in the manosphere, outside of manosphere. I'm just here to call out the truth and was right. Like the time when you saw me when I did the one about the Kevin Samuels and and Tim, Tim talking about he on child support. The reason why I was talking about not taking up for him, I mean, people are going to take up for him because they fuck with him or they they loyal to him. He the godfather. I was talking, to, I wanted to talk about him on the aspect of you shame him for making less money than that baby mama Terrence. Well, why y'all not shaming her for lowering her standards to get down with a man who make that much money? See what I'm saying? There is a double standard. These are simple forces doing this. Now that he made it, you want to go back 30 years later. I don't care if it was yesterday about him being on child support or him making less money. I'm like, that was a benefit for him because if they go buy more incomes, 
the less he make, the, the, the less they take. So I was trying to talk to him from that aspect, not trying to say, oh, he ain't do this, he ain't do that. He's a grown man. He can handle himself. And the way he's been doing so far, he's not even going to respond to you. So no reason yeah. to. Yeah, it's it. This is interesting because uh, there is this. I mean, we we all know about the the eighty twenty principle, where twenty percent. It's probably less than that at yeah, this yeah, point. Ninety ten or something. Uh, yeah, like that. Uh, so fifteen percent, ten percent. The guys are sleeping with ninety percent of the women, and so uh, disproportionately, you have these same guys that are impregnating and have all these baby mamas all over the place or um and there's just a it, it seems like one of the major things that is broken is making good choices like mate selecting that it seems like that is a is broken because it seems to me and I was just talking to a buddy of mine that I went to college with earlier today and we were both saying, because I'm married and he's married also, and we're blessed and fortunate because we got women that actually are modest. They actually have traditional values. You know, they believe in submitting and, you know, right. and, and, and playing that role. Um, and we were just talking about how, you know, these days it seems like women, I mean, we know that this is true. It doesn't just seem like. It seems dis disproportionately women prioritize swag over substance. That's so if you have swag, <laughs> if you yeah, have swag, <laughs> if you have swag, <laughs> then then uh, that's it's like that's all that's all that matters. But the thing is, is that especially as a man, if you're below a certain age. If you have a lot of swag, 99% of the time, it's going to be because you, it's because you slept with a lot of women. That's how you got that swag. So that ends up being the sort of pre-selection code. Right. So, and they, and, and, and it's like a disproportionate number of women seem to be really hypersensitive to that. And they want that. Well, Hey, you, you, you must be good because other people want you. Meanwhile, the dude that, you know, the nerd that's got his nose in the book, he not going to get no shot. <laughs> Until 30 years later. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> he's high by you, man. Now, all of a sudden, you come talking about, uh, yeah, I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> man, you can't make this shit up, man. <laughs> that's how it, <laughs> it is man and he tell you that's... kick rocks he reappeal now and alpha fuck you so there you go <laughs> boom <Yep. laughs> that's, you can't yeah, it's, un it's, it's unfortunate that it's it's become this sort of uh, out of balance uh, and obviously uh, social media has accelerated this foolishness yeah um you know, I still believe that there are good women out there. Um, I like I said, I I was. I think it is. Well, yeah. Find... <laughs> I was fortunate to find one myself, um, but uh, I had to kiss a lot of frogs. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have, brother. I think we all have, man. So I understand. I'm married too. So, yeah. So yeah. That's what's up, no, and that's interesting because I think most people would would just assume that you're not married. Yeah, because they think that ain't no woman gonna deal with a a man like me. But my wife, um, she's against child support, and she knows her role. And you know, we don't have them problems. And but like I said, I'm 42, so I'm not 22 getting married. I mean. When you when you get certain age, you should know what you want and 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 uh know know uh, who you're dealing with. And I did. I think my age had a lot to do with it. But I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> if I'd have known what I know, like maybe like five years, ago, I'd have been living a free agent lifestyle. And everything's good, everything's fine. But I believe I'd have, I'd have just lived a free agent lifestyle. All right, man. Well. Uh, this has been uh, 
very uh, informative, and uh, you know I appreciate your time. Thank you uh, so much for agreeing to do this, and you know I look forward to uh, maybe coming over to your platform sometime. And oh yeah, we're gonna set that up. Turn the favor. We're gonna set that up, bro. And anytime you want me to come on, just let me know ahead of time. I'm more than I'm more than happy, man. I, see, here's the thing. This, this is nothing I don't like about the uh, the the, um, the black man. You got some cats, man. You know. They had to go through it and and get people to uh, network with. We supposed to be about building network, but it seemed like something got big. They they don't look back, and I and I don't like that shit. Cause my thing is, dang, if you saying that we supposed to be uh, brotherhood, but then when you come up now, you don't know me. I have a problem with that. You know, it ain't happened to me personally, but I see it. You know, and um, that's why now I just just keep skating, doing me. I'm in my own lane. Uh, and I don't mind that work with somebody that I see that's really trying to build and grow, not just trying to do something quick. You know, like you, you're doing your thing. I appreciate your support. I'm not going to say, oh, man, uh, you ain't got enough subscribers. No, fuck that. We're going to build and grow. You know what I'm saying? But it's unfortunate that, like I said, everybody's not talking. That, everybody not walking that walk. They talking. Everybody not walking that walk. Just people in general. Even people, even people out here, man, they, they talk that talk, but they not willing to go go to the deep end, man. They 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 just uh they trying to get on that train and hop off when they I guess reach their benefit or what they're looking for. I'm just being that that's why I, uh I just I again you just can't make this shit up. You just can't <laughs> No you can't. No you can't. Um, well God bless you man and uh well, please continue brother. please continue to do the Lord's work. Spread the word about the, uh, the this uh, gender bias system that's yep. uh, been enslaving men and putting men in jail called child support. Put them in the cemeteries, man. Yep. Fuck child support. <laughs> <laughs> you already right, know. All right, man. All right, brother. Peace. All right, I'll see you. All right, peace. All right, now. All right. <laughs>